Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, how are you all feeling? Good? Great. A bit, a bit disturbed? A bit good? A bit good? Wonderful. We're going to have a good conversation then. Hi. Hello, Noah. Can you hear? Uh, hello, yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. I'm very good. Thank you. I'm so excited. Amazing. Where are you dialing in from right now? Uh, right now, right now, I'm in Jayapura. It's the uh, capital city of Western Papua in Indonesia. Yeah. Amazing. Lovely for you to join us. So, um, yes, I'm going to introduce you first. I'm very happy. Yeah. Start speaking. <laughs> Great. Um, yes, yeah, so welcome um, to uh, this blog um, where we will be uh, discussing, um, among other things, um, the Katogo film we just saw, uh, as well as topics around um, uh, viewing African narratives with a Western lens. Um, with us today, we have Noah Groth. Uh, have I said that correctly? Grote or Groth? Uh, Grote, yeah. Grote. Uh, I also don't know how to in English, yeah. <laughs> so maybe a Grote, yeah. Great. So uh, Noah Grote, who's the director of uh, the film we just watched, Katogo. I'm just going to read a brief introduction uh, of you and your work so that I don't get it wrong. It's on my phone. Um, so Noah is an audiovisual artist who has lived in diverse situations globally and has encountered a wide range of human experiences. His artistic process is rooted in the belief that the most powerful stories emerge from the collective wisdom and collaborative efforts of diverse talents. Um, Noah, I will introduce you, um, I'm rather invite you to tell us a bit more about your artistic work. Um, uh, but also with us is uh, Thomas Burg Halter. I try every day to say this correctly. Every day, really. I try in my head, I swear. <laughs> Thomas, who is an anthropologist ethnomusicologist, AV artist, and writer from Bern. He is the founder and director of Norient and the co-founder and strategic director of the Norient Festival. Um, welcome to the both of you. And I'm Emma Zioka, um, this year's artistic director. Um, so yeah, I just would like to open um, back with you, Noah. Um, perhaps you could tell us a bit more about uh, your work in film and then we can uh, delve into uh, the film that we just uh, watched. Um, I would ask you to repeat your question one more time because the audio quality is a bit echoey. Ah, so maybe if you can repeat a bit slower. Sorry about that. Yes, I'm just inviting you to tell us a bit more about uh, your works in film. Um, uh, perhaps uh, because I've seen some other works mm -hmm. that look like uh, music videos, so maybe just telling us uh, a bit more about your artistic practice would be lovely. Okay. Okay, thanks. So um, right now I'm, I'm still in film school, and um, so some time ago during COVID, I, I decided it can be nice to abroad, so I will study there um, for two semesters in Kampala Film School. And during that time, I um, really learned to love making films um, with international crews and uh, in different contexts. So um, Right now, I'm also working here on my upcoming project, which will be my bachelor project. Um, and yeah, I like to do freestyle films that are a bit, um, I don't know, I think maybe in alignment with my um, current emotional processes, how I'm feeling, you know? So during Katogo, I felt a bit, um, yeah, overstimulated, so I need to get some output to direct all that input and uh, create something that is uh, quite, I don't know, like multidimensional and uh, multifaceted. Mm -hmm. So the next project will be, I think, a bit more organized and um, 
have a different uh, different approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a bit more organized. I feel like um, in some ways, um, uh, a lot of the time when I hear people trying to define the the music scene in Uganda or the music scene from East Africa, they use this word chaotic, and I feel like you encapsulated chaos with your images. So maybe that's what this was supposed to be, because um, ideally when you move around um, um, certain spaces in the, in the underground clubs, um, in the markets, um, in the streets of Kampala, it does feel super chaotic and very haphazard moving around. So in some ways I feel that you did uh, capture that with uh, the short film Katogo. But uh, by uh, organized, uh, we will get back to you on what you mean by the film needs to be a bit more organized. Um, but it's exciting to know that you studied filmmaking in uh, actually in uh, Kampala Film School. Um, so perhaps Thomas, um, I could, yeah, yes, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, just uh, real quick, I love that you mentioned Kampala uh, music, you know, like uh, Ugandan mm -hmm. East African music. Yeah. Uh, because it definitely was a big inspiration. Um, during that whole time when I was making the film, because um, not only do you have like um, um, traditional polyrhythms and everything in modern club music, but I feel like furthermore, there's a trend of deconstructed club sounds, you know, that are really um, totally new and um, really uh, gave me a totally different inner rhythm also that um, is quite, um, yeah, anti-structure and anti-order and really embracing the unpredictable, you know, also in dance music. So um, I think um, that really shows also throughout the film. So that just a uh, short comment. Uh, okay. right. your remark. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Um, yeah. So uh, perhaps, uh, Thomas, you can uh, maybe let us know how you approach your own artistic process, having um, worked on pieces of art, um, say, for example, the time zones um, episodes that you have done more recently, actually, in Uganda as well, um, and probably um, how you approach working on works um, that are, you know, about people from Africa, from Kenya, from Uganda, from uh, South Africa as well, with the Ife Rom piece uh, in Durban. Yeah, thanks, Emma. Um, it's different ways of of working in each project you i work i work differently and also each project you learn from uh, things that worked and things that didn't work out um every project uh, sometimes the people are more in the center and sometimes the place i was just thinking and uh, i did a project sonic traces from switzerland like many years ago uh, where i went very close to to the place and to different people from different generations, uh, class, uh, thing like this. I felt comfortable to move between different uh, kind of people. And when I'm outside, uh, for example, I did the film uh, Contradict in Ghana with Peter Guir, filmmaker from Bern. There we focused more on the people and tried to get very close to the, the people, artists mainly on one side, on the other side, uh, politicians and uh, evangelical priests. Uh, to them, we didn't were so close, that's another story. But to the artists, we were quite close. Mm -hmm. And we tried to focus what it means to be an artist uh, in their place. It's often more a story about an artist in their place, but also in the world. It's not so much a local story that we try to tell. Uh, also, in my PhD in Beirut, it's a mixture. The more time I can spend in a, in a place, uh, the more it's also about the place and not just about the people. Uh, I don't know if I can. But I'm a bit hesitant to talk too much about the place itself if I'm not been there too long. Okay, yeah. all right. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like even with the, f the way we met, um, you actually came to the place where I'm from, and I imagine that this is um, something you do with your other uh, works. You make the trip out to be with the people um, that you are working with, um, or how important is it for, for, I mean, for your work to be there to experience the place? 
I mean, it's it's core. I mean, I always meet the people that I that I work with. Then mm -hmm. I try to find out how mm -hmm. to work with them. That's also changed over the years. Some in the beginning, it was more like interviews, and you mm -hmm. publish something about them in a newspaper here. Mm -hmm. Back then, uh, they would never see what you have written because it's in German and it's not on the internet. Mm -hmm. Now it changed a lot because everyone sees every bleep, every bleep that you that you uh, publish. And uh, I think that's that's good, but that's also uh, so you have to really uh, be in discussion with the artists mm -hmm. that you're dealing with. And also uh, recently, it, it's it's more and more also about uh, sharing uh, power, uh, money, also who gets what from a project, mm -hmm. who gets what when a project is uh, released and successful. These are all questions that are. I'm constantly working with, and it's changing in e every project, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so I'll just come back um, uh, to Noah. I noticed um, when the credits were going up um, that uh, there was a lot of uh, names from uh, uh, Uganda, Ugandan names, on the part of the crew. So perhaps you can tell us the actual process of creating um, Katogo. Um, did you work uh, directly with um, Ugandans in the writing of the story? How involved were they in the actual filmmaking process, aside from um, the actors, of course? Um, were they from the region? Or yeah. Yeah. Um, so generally, I think the whole project is a friendship project. Um, I would say with 80% of the cast and crew, I really have a close relationship with them and um, therefore from the start I knew that I wanted to start this project with my friends and um, when I had like the general idea and concept of the film, I decided that I want to gather a team of co-writers. So I was um, there looking, okay, I want a really diverse team there, so I was looking for painters, dancers, poets, musicians, and um, so my friend Hibo, I think uh, you know her, right, Emma? Yeah. Um, she was offering to uh, host the types of writers' meetings in her place, so we gathered, we came together, and um, in the beginning, the, the concept was, I had like a bit of an esoteric approach, I think, so um, all of the eight scenes in the film, they had like an underlying um, universal topic, you know, if you look, for example, at the first scene in the mountains, um, I labeled it like the mystical. So I was um, inviting all of the writers, okay, close your eyes, what, um, because many of them grew up in the village, you know, what sounds come to you, what um, do you feel on your skin, what images come come to life. So there we just uh, gathered our perspectives, you know, there I really think it was so useful to have uh, artists of different disciplines. And from there we somehow crafted the scenes and uh, filled them with images and uh, storylines. A lot of the things came also spontaneously through location scouting processes and um, so that was the writing process. The research process, of course, is um, based on um, one and a half years living in Uganda prior to that and uh, already knowing places that I like to spend time with and um, people that I want to involve in the project. So um, it was really just um, like accumulation of a lot of research um, that I've done subconsciously in the time previous to that. Um, and then when the time of shooting came, gathered all my friends, we uh, had a couple of shooting days in Cabo Valley and um, from there we uh, shot. And um, then in Kampala was the second part where um, I was working on the club scene and the shooting of the um, Kampala scenes outside, you know, and that was a matter of 
again, organizing artists, talking with um, the DJ from the scene, It's Midnight. Um, really a great influential person also in the Kampala club scene. She has a collective called Midnight Tsunami. And um, I really appreciate her because what many people don't know is that she's a very good uh, poet with, uh, with such a unique style. So we came together and I was telling her I want to make a scene about darkness. And we had all these conversations about um, darkness as a concept of the divine of God. And uh, from there, she crafted that poetry. Um, and I was talking to my um, friend and producer, Masaka Masaka, who gave us a beat of the similar style. And then we made a party in the film studio, shot it, and then came back for editing. Nice. That was the process. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for <laughs> <laughs> giving us an in-depth um, breakdown of the process. Um, so I have um, a comment, two questions, and hopefully time to open to the <laughs> audience. Um, but I um, initially, after viewing this film, first of all, I was drawn to the first scene at the at the river. Um, with, uh, with the drama on the hill and the children sort of running. And I was like, what's going on here? It looks really beautiful. I love rhythm. I love drums. So I was immediately drawn to the film from this point. And then we weave into, um, you know, the, the first, uh, the second narrative, rather, or the second chapter of the eight um, scenes that you present. And it's just the most very jarring, fantastical images and I was like hmm, what is going on here and then I get to the Matatu scene where there's like the the hip-hop um, music playing and for me that was my favorite scene the collage the way it was brought together the music there is really fire and the darkness midnight scene it's really beautiful to hear how you came up with that um, uh, um, with uh, with uh, your your collaborator in Uganda um, but my comment was that I we nearly did not program this film because of uh, a few scenes that were a bit disturbing. Um, and the fact that we had so many conversations about it, um, and somebody uh, actually said, if you're having this many convos, then you must program it, because then what is art if it doesn't elicit any conversation? What is, I mean, should you just sit here and be so comfortable and relaxed and be like, oh, so beautiful, wow, and then go home? It's like art needs to spark some sort of, you know, reaction, whether it's a good one, a bad one, a visceral one. And I love that um, actually uh, that you work deeply with Ugandan artists because the people we've met are really crazy. Uh, for lack of a better word, but crazy in a good way. Um, but I have one scene which I would say that I, as a filmmaker as well, I probably would have um, done it differently. And that, for me, was the you know the focus on 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 like the 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 slaughterhouse scene, right? Just to understand what was that scene about and why did you have that stylistic um, preference to really focus on the dying goat and the blood and the riffing and the dying and the dying and the dying and dying. It's like we know um, that something has to be slaughtered to be eaten at some point. There's different ways to portray this. I'm just curious to know yeah. why this was your yeah approach for this particular scene. Yes, uh, I love that question, actually, um, because it uh, is also, I think, um, quite interesting about the whole block uh, that you put this uh, film in, because I get totally different reactions on that scene, depending on if I show it with a Ugandan audience or if I show it with a Western audience. Um, so for example, so let me start with the uh, um, Ugandan audience. You know, usually I see people, they start smiling like, oh, you know, and uh, or they, I don't know they have a reaction of it that is more akin to something they have seen it it is uh, totally visible in public life you know um, it is not something taboo it is not something radical it is um, uh, an everyday sight you know if you go to the market and the uh, pig gets tied on the back of the motorcycle with chickens uh, hanging down you know 
then you hear the sound of the slaughter. It's normal, you know, it's an everyday occurrence. But then we when we come to um, Western societies where slaughter is totally done in the dark, you know, not less cruel or um, even more systematic and cold, you know, uh, there we get like, oh no, you should put a trigger warning. You should uh, not show explicit images of animal death. Um, I can add that I have a background also of, um, yeah, enjoying vegetarianism. So at that point I was uh, also like, okay, uh, it's no problem to confront people with, with the truth. You know, I think everybody should uh, see slaughter images at least once in their life. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um, I can attest to it being um, uh, a regular practice um, up country. Um, I, I almost had to slaughter someone, <laughs> a chicken, <laughs> up country. <laughs> I was like, hmm, I don't know. But then my grand was like, but you're going to eat it, yeah? Okay, so it's fine when you eat, but it's not okay when you have to slaughter. But I get what you mean by that. And that's uh, part of the reason also, um, aside from just the portrayal of um, you know, the different stylistic choices you have, the different stylistic choices you, Thomas, make with your work, the fact that you are both representing as white men from Western society telling um, African stories, um, just uh, would love to uh, know whether you have this in the back of your mind when you are thinking about um, the choices of stories that you tell how you tell them, and um, uh, if in any way you, uh, you know, have some, th if does this affect the work that you're, that you're presenting to, to audiences here in the West, um, back home um, in I don't Africa? know if you can hear me, but uh, the image yes. froze, so I don't know what's oh, going on. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was right just, um, yeah, throwing a question to both of you. We'll start with Thomas, but... It's talking more about um, both of you representing as white um, uh, men, filmmakers from, from the West, and whether this affects how you create your work, um, whether you, um, you, know, uh, you have this in the back of your mind when you are telling narratives from the continent, from uh, you know, Indonesia, from, from any other society that is not your own. How do you move, um, you know, with you know as as you represent and does it affect your work sure it's at the it's in the core it's in the core of the of the work i mean at the end of the day i started anthropology i started in orient 20 years ago with the idea an orient no orientalism don't uh, bring uh, exotic stereotypes from different countries to to europe and then to f try to find out how to do that. It's not so easy because in anthropology and also in my experience, it's the case when you speak to someone, if I speak to you, you would, I ask you a question, you answer the question in a way that you think I might understand. But to your friend, you might tell a different story. So it's always the stories that I get heard from people are stories that they think I understand. And I try to counter that in different ways. First of all, first important for me is to do research, 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 that I know a lot about the scene, about the country sometimes, uh, that I know uh, that I make a lot of meetings, not just meeting the people that are in the end in the product or in the film, then trying to see how to collaborate and then trying not to portray exotic images. In Contradict, our film in Ghana, there is almost no street scene. Basically, there is almost no outside scene. It's just artists in a studio, in studios, and uh, politicians in nice offices, and uh, priests in big churches, basically. But there's no outside scenes, or very, very rarely, uh, because we didn't want to have this, uh, these exotic images. And we wanted it to be a story about our time and about the world. So the best reactions were always, first important is that the artists inside uh, are agreeing with the work and seem to be happy. <laughs> and uh, the second is that in Switzerland and also Europe, people started saying, oh wow, these people are actually like us. They are not thinking so differently. They are not like 
exotic or something. They, even young, also young people, and that's for me important to show that people all over the world uh, have hopes, dreams, sometimes traumata, unfortunately, uh, depression, all these things, and they have different uh, positions, possibilities, different surroundings, contexts, and uh, but at the core, it's people who try, try to make a living through something, and this is what we try to portray in a way, and to show that we are not so different than sometimes uh, it is being told sometimes to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think uh, I personally, um, given um, the different perspectives of um, direction or like uh, stylistic choices or filmmaking approaches to um, how you even tell uh, the narratives of other people, it being important to be there in person, it being important to work with the local communities, uh, doing your research, maybe having like a period of time for you to just be immersed in the culture so that when you are telling the story, then it's as um, accurate as you can make it. Um, that's um, really admirable of both um, you uh, and Noah of your artistic practice. Um, it's interesting that in one case, um, you uh, are okay to show the crazy streets of Kampala and in some of the works that you're saying, the stereotypes being repeated are an issue for your work um, and that you would prefer to use other images. I, from the outside, agree with both. However, on the <laughs> um, especially on the, on, the, on the portrayal of the streets, I don't have a problem with that per se. It's just that when it comes without uh, context and it's just a... Uh, crazy for crazy sick. It's just flashing images of crazy, 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 crazy. And it's like, these people just crazy. It's like, But it's like, um, if we have um, these things going on, it's always good to reflect the actuality of, of, of what's going on in our spaces. Um, but also to be very aware that these images have been abused over and over again. And um, with that, there is someone who said that um, to, to kind of... Um, uh, dehumanize um, a society, you build caricatures of them, and um, these sort of just, um, you know, caricatures are supposed to be very fantastical and just like, you know, almost uh, inhuman, and so this sort of makes it uh, that you don't even ask what is the name of this person in this image, where are they from, what is this child, they are what is the child's name, what is it, it's like, no, this is just a beautiful image of a woman with a child and a boob, and this is just a crazy street with a you know, so either way, I enjoy all styles of, of, of art, but I have always at the back of my mind, if it doesn't like uh, seek to um, uh, sort of uh, explain um, these things without, you know, without uh, going in and be like, I, I decided to do the streets of Kampala with trash because the government and, you know, and uh, 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 Israel and da da da, and all of these things are happening, and so therefore the people cannot and they're traumatized. But just basically thinking very carefully why you have chosen whichever stylistic um, approach and making it so that it's uh, um, uh, it, it, it you think of the effects of both of the audiences, like you said, Noah, how you present it in the Ugandan audience versus vis-a-vis -vis the Western audience, thinking of how it will be taken and thinking of whether that's a relevant um, outcome for each of, of the works that uh, that you do. Yeah. So that's a little rant. I'm done with my <laughs> little rant. Um, but all this to say, um, Noah, this uh, piece of work, I feel the color grading was super beautiful. The, the I don't know, everything, like literally, it felt like I was at Yege Yege at some points because for all those who don't know, Yege Yege is a very uh, amazing festival that happens in Uganda. It's crazy. It's just as crazy. It's this is this is the feeling you would feel when you go to Yege Yege, especially at the midnight scene. It's really. It's. Uh, I think um, uh, another thing to add is that Uganda also has a lot of uh, political strife right now, and not to go into politics, um, but the cultural and creative expression of people who are going through a lot of uh, suffering, you know, is always really crazy and beautiful. So 
I really uh, feel tied to some of these uh, crazy or artistic uh, works and stuff. Um, but yeah, before uh, I speak you all to death, and I think we are, are we over time? A little? Thank you, Vincent. Do we have time for a question or comment? <laughs> okay, great. Any questions or comments from the audience um, before we wrap it up? Um, that was a very enjoyable film to 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 watch. Um, congratulations! I think you've made something that's very powerful. I don't think anyone can can watch it and not come away um, with strong feelings. <coughs> and I think the overstimulation you were trying to convey really came through. Um, I think my. I'd be interested in understanding your artistic practice and maybe where you think you'll take your artistic practice. Um, you've gone from uh, Uganda to now Papua New Guinea, I think you said you're in now. Um, um, I'm not in Papua New Guinea, I'm in uh, Western Papua, which is now part of Indonesia, yeah. Nice, and um, I, I, I'm just curious in, um, in your artistic practice, um, do you feel it's important to make these long-term relationships with the artists that you work with? Because obviously, part of this um, thing that's been raised uh, in the conversation is the Western gaze is uh, prevalent because of the social mobility that uh, people from Western societies have. And so obviously, the images that come out from Ugandan filmmakers or uh, filmmakers from Papua, um, th we don't see them. The flows of communication are very strongly leading from the West outwards and, and rarely the other way around. So um, when you do end up working with these artists and, and uh, taking up this space and, and people may be watching your film and not maybe not looking at the credits, not seeing who it is that is behind these, these, um, these projects, do you keep it in mind? Is it an objective for you to continue developing these relationships on the long term and building some kind of infrastructure, knowing um, the artistic challenges that the communities there might have? Um, I'm sorry to say due to the audio quality, I really couldn't understand the question fully. Um, Should I, I don't know if it's possible to write it in the chat or to repeat it maybe with a bit more volume. Yes, I can I'm try. I can try to repeat. <laughs> I don't know if if if, uh, if if you'll hear me, but I think um, I guess what I was trying to to get at is that you may not uh, people watching your film uh, may get the impression that they are watching a film from a Ugandan filmmaker. Um, you don't feature yourself mm -hmm. in the film. There's a few people. Uh, we see some expats in the club scene, but they're not doing any of the crazy things. Uh, in the film, right? We see the Ugandans uh, stuffing their yeah. faces with food. Uh, we see them slaughtering the goats. But uh, for all intents and purposes, one could walk away from the film thinking this is art by and from Ugandans. And so um, as you give yourself this freedom to express yourself and all the ideas that you have, um, the overstimulation, you got this great opportunity to express yourself. Do you, do you think, and is it an objective for you to build with the same artists and to build on the long term um, to kind of uh, help Ugandans or people in Papua perhaps to, to, to have the same freedom to, to express themselves and to create? Or will you keep moving around the world, making new films? Um, thank you, okay, now I've understood the question well. Um, so I already feel that um, this project, it was a very collaborative project. So I don't like the way I see it. Um, my role, it was more of a facilitator of like opening up the space for uh, many people to uh, put their art into a film form. For example, you talked about the uh, scenes in the music video, you know, um, with people stuffing their faces. It was a collaboration with set designers from Rwanda, the Ibisazi designers, Nyabio. Um, it was a crazy collaboration. So they came to Kabali and they gave me a list of the props they want. So um, many of the things I could get, but they were also requesting 
hey man, we need some human shit. We need 30 frogs, you know? So it was really, um, yeah, uh, I was learning so much about uh, set design practices that I had no idea about. So um, in that case, in that um, way, I mean, I'm totally looking forward to collaborating with them again. And um, as I said before, this is a project built on friendships and um, long lasting friendships, you know, so um, already um, looking at the sound design, for example, if uh, some of you were at Norient last year and saw Queto Kwanza, it was a, um, a dance film with a soundtrack by the same sound designer that uh, has worked on Katogo Nao Semagye Mugaga Timothy. So um, really I'm looking at long-term collaborations, definitely. And um, I don't uh, think I can ever separate myself from that Ugandan creative space. It has become a family somehow. And um, I've been exposed to so much creativity and uh, my understanding of um, my own artistic practice was totally shaped by all these experimental artists um, that are totally unapologetic about their approach. And um, yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. Great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great. Um, I think uh, with the time we need to wrap it up. Perhaps Thomas, you have any final thoughts? Uh, anything you want to share? <laughs> it's, I think it's an import, a super important discussion and enjoyed a lot uh, being asked by you. Uh, it's important that you ask the questions and that we are a bit grilled sometimes. <laughs> and uh, but the answers are not so are not so easy. It's super complex in every project. Uh, that there's different different ways that are maybe good and some that are delicate or wrong. And uh, yeah, with Norient and also in my own work, which is try with different approaches to still be able to speak with people that are outside of Europe and, uh, and Asia, because I decided for myself I will not stop talking with people outside, because I think it's, it would be wrong. Uh, it would be wrong to say that only uh, Swiss filmmaker is able to make a film about Switzerland and vice versa. So I, I'm ready to face criticism and I try to improve and I try to collaborate and uh, because I think at the end of the day it's one planet and we have to somehow stay in connection as well. Mm -hmm. I agree with this. Thank you so much and yeah, thank you for um, facilitating this space where I can come and grill you in your own studio. <laughs> <laughs> such a such a mistake. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I think the next film will begin. I'm not sure when Vincent will tell us. <laughs> thank you so much, Noah. Thanks for joining us. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I was looking through the program of Norient. I'm totally jealous, and I wish I could be there with you. Um, <laughs> please enjoy the rest of the event, and I wish you a beautiful evening. Great. Bye. Yeah? Thank you.